building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 20, a woodwork extravaganza with just a little bit of metalwork. The first thing to do is to fit the hardwood capping strips, and I'm doing this because the 2x1 that I use for the framework is not really 2x1, it's a metric equivalent, and it's not quite tall enough. The best thing to do is to just cap it with hardwood, and it's going to look better anyway. When I looked in my box of mahogany strips, I was horrified to find that I didn't have much of it left, not 3 sixteenths of an inch thick anyway, but I had lots of little bits and pieces. So I thought, well, hmm, I'll use these. At one time, I could have just got into my car, gone to the local model shop and bought some more mahogany, but this is not the case anymore. In the area where I live, most of the model shops have shut down, and it was bound to happen. The internet prices are much lower than retail outlet prices because the overheads are lower. The cost of the rent and rates alone for a high street shop make it prohibitive to trade using that system. The rent and rates on a small warehouse facility are far lower. And that's one of the benefits of the internet, lower prices. But sometimes it's a problem for me because I need a hands-on approach to just make sure that the parts that I'm buying fit together. When I started searching the internet for tooth belt drives and pulleys, it was a minefield. There's so much out there. So much of it was highly unsuitable for what I needed. But by going on Spen Bearing's website, that showed me that they stocked them and I could go into the shop and have a look at them. And it's a good job because I would have bought the wrong ones if I'd have bought them off the internet. So if you want to look on Spen Bearing's website, the address is on screen at the moment. And also at the moment, I'm finishing off the capping job. There's a lot of woodworking in this episode, and I can't help that. Unfortunately, the complexity of the mounting base to house the generator, coupled with the top base that holds the steam plant, is quite a complicated woodworking job. So as I was saying before I diversified into the problems and benefits of the internet, I managed to find sufficient pieces of 3 sixteenths of an inch thick mahogany to cap the top, and now I need to cut lots of short planks to do the sides. The size of mahogany strip that I've used the most over the years is this, approximately half an inch wide by 3 30 seconds of an inch thick, and I use this for planking model steamboats and all sorts of jobs, and luckily I'd ended up with lots of short pieces, so using my small bandsaw I cut them to length to fit on the sides of the main baseboard. One viewer wrote in and said that maybe I should use some model bricks for the side of the baseboard, but in this case no I don't think so because it's a vertical engine that's on the top of the baseboard and it's a Stuart 504 boiler which is a bit of a toy boiler, it's not a serious scale model. But I take the point, bricks could have looked okay on this. There are many different ways to make models like this and I like to diversify somewhat. Sometimes I'll use brickwork, sometimes I use wood, and in this case I'm just using these vertical planks. I could have alternated the planks between mahogany and a beachy. That would have looked too fussy, I think. Or I could have put black paper in between the planks, and that could have looked okay. But no, I'm just using planks as you see here. This is driving me mad enough. By the way, if I do use bricks on a job like this, the model bricks that I use are called Typhoc bricks. I'll put the spelling on screen to avoid any confusion. These Typhoc bricks are a bit larger than normal, and they're made of terracotta. They are proper bricks. And Typhoc sets are really good. You stick them together with a solution of sand and sugar, and you can build all sorts of buildings. And then when you get fed up with the buildings, you just put them in a bucket of water. That dissolves the sugar. And after a while, you end up with lots of small terracotta bricks ready for your next project. Typhoc bricks are approximately one-sixth scale. Well, I've finally done it. I never thought I'd get through it, and you would not believe how long this took. All that I've really shown in this video is the starting point and the finishing point, and it's finished. I'll be rubbing this down very shortly once all the cyanoacrylate adhesive has fully set. So now it's over to the motor. What am I doing? I'm dismantling it. I'm taking the pulley off, and I'm going to take the mounting plate off because I need to modify it. What I need to do is put some sort of a shock absorbing system between the motor mounts and the metal plate that will hold it to the baseboard. Talking about metal plates, I got some of these. And these are very useful things to have in the workshop. I got them from Blackgates Engineering, and they're a byproduct of one of the parts that they sell. They don't normally sell this part with the item, it's just something that comes with the parts that they buy. And they have quite a lot of them, so if you need any, Blackgates Engineering is the place to go.
and as usual their web address is on screen at the moment. This piece of steel, with its pressed-in ribs, was a good alternative to fabricating a bracket to hold the motor. I'm going to have to cut this down a little bit, but anyway, that's not a big problem. Here I'm marking it out. I then cut it out on the bandsaw, drilled the mounting holes, and bent it to shape. To illustrate this, here's a before and after. The one on the right is the original. The one on the left is the one that I've modified to mount the motor. As you can see, I enlarged the centre hole, and I've painted it in etch primer. A while back, via the auction site we all know and love called eBay, I bought some of these. These are rubber grommet sets. And rubber grommets such as these are very useful things to have in the workshop. I'm going to use them to shock mount the motor mount. So first of all, I drilled the holes to the right size, which is a quarter inch diameter, the size required to fit these grommets. But they're very difficult to fit into the holes. These grommets are quite strong and you have to fight with them. But if you fight with them too much with a screwdriver, you will damage them. So you need to fit them with the help of a lubricant, but don't use oil because it may attack the actual rubber stuff. Washing up liquid is very good for this job. It's a very good lubricant for fitting rubber things into solid parts. I didn't use washing up liquid. I used a different method. I just put them in my mouth for a while until the saliva had thoroughly permeated the rubber grommets. Usual health and safety warning, I do not recommend putting rubber grommets in your mouth because you may swallow them, and then you would have to wait a considerable time before you could use them. Also, you might choke on them, which could be a bit of a problem, but thankfully I did neither of those things, and they were successfully fitted to the motor mounting. So here's the before and after picture again. Everything is now ready to fit together, and the tooth belt drive to the generator will be completed. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.